Hello everyone, in this video we'll show you how to set up our SMI2M RS485 display as a slave master and spy, and how to use it with compact PLCPR200. The SMI2M is a highly versatile and user-friendly device designed to seamlessly integrate into various industrial and automation systems. Its compact size and robust features make it an ideal choice for monitoring and displaying data. The SMI2M can work as a Modbus master, slave or spy. It's an RS485 display that supports various data types, including integers, words, floats, and strings. The four-digit display can show information in red, yellow, and green, making it easy to read in any situation. Setting it up is simple with the Akitech Tool Pro software and a USB connection. The SMI2M supports Modbus RTU and ASCII protocols, so it works with many different systems. Its compact design makes it perfect for small spaces, and it includes password protection for added security. Now, let's configure the SMI2M display. First, connect the SMI2M to the PC using a micro USB cable. No external power supply is needed for configuration. Next, launch the Akitech ToolPro software on the PC. In a new project, click on Add Devices in the toolbar. In the Open dialog, select the port being used as the interface. Now, select the protocol Akitech Auto Detection Protocol, click on Find Device, and then click Find. If the correct device is found, select it and click the button Add Devices to add the device to the project. Now, the device is ready to be configured. Let's start by loading the default values. This will undo any changes and give us a fresh start for setting things up. To load the default values, click on the Factory Settings Toolbar item. After resetting to default values, click on the right parameters toolbar item. Now the SMI2M can be configured as a slave, master or spy. However, there are some configurations that are common to all three Modbus modes, such as RS485 interfaces, display settings and safe output state. Let's start by configuring the RS485 interface. Here, all default values can be seen. For demonstration purposes, we can change the board rate from 9600 to 115200 and leave all other values unchanged. Now, let's configure the display settings. For demonstration purposes, we can change the data type from int to real and set the decimal point to 2. All other parameters can be changed according to needs like display color, blinking. Here, we can configure the output safe state according to our requirements. For demonstration purposes, we can change the safe state timeout from 0 to 10 seconds, the safe state color from green to red. Lastly, click on the right parameters toolbar item to load all parameters into the SMI2M. Now, let's configure the SMI2M for specific Modbus slave mode. First, we will find our slave address, which can be found in the Modbus common section. By default, the address in slave mode is 1 and byte order is unchanged. Let's change the slave address from 1 to 16 and byte order to swap registers. Next, we go to the device settings section and change the operation mode to slave if it was not already set to slave. By default, it is always set to slave. Now, our configuration for slave mode is complete. Click on the right parameters to load all the parameters into the SMI2M. Now, we can demonstrate the SMI2M as a slave and the PR200 PLC as a master. SMI2M as a Modbus slave receives commands and data from the Modbus master, such as sensor readings, machine statuses, or user inputs, but it cannot initiate requests for data. It updates its display accordingly, providing real-time information, historical data, or interactive controls as instructed by the master. Let's input some real values into the PR200 PLC and observe how they appear on the SMI2M display. First, open the Akitech LP software. Click on Device Settings, go to the interface, and change it to Master. The other parameters can remain the same as they are in the default mode, as indicated in the table. Now, go to the Slave Settings and change the address to 16, as we configured in the SMI2M. Additionally, we need to change our register order by clicking Register Order Change, since we want to display real values, we declare a variable named dis underscore real of type real with register address 4206, as specified in the datasheet of the SMI2M, and we set the read function to 0x04 and the write function to 0x10. Next, we declare another variable named input of type real, which can be controlled by the display and joined to the network variable dis underscore real.
In the Display Manager, click on Form 1 to add a new form. Then, click on Display Element and drag the I.O. box in real to the display. Add the variable input to the I.O. box. Now, load the program to the PR200 PLC. Now, connect the SMI2M to the PR200 PLC according to the wiring diagram. As you can see, when the value is changed in the PR200 display, the value also changes in the SMI2M display. Now let's configure the SMI2M as the master. We'll follow the same process as before. All the common parameters for the RS485 interface, display and safe output state can remain the same. To configure the SMI2M as the master, we need to make some changes in the Modbus master section. First, we change the target device address from 1 to 10 and the start register to 512. Additionally, we set the byte order to swap bytes in the Modbus common section. Now, navigate to device settings and select operation mode. Set it to master. The SMI2M is now configured as the master device. Click on the right parameters to load all parameters into the SMI2M. Let's demonstrate how the SMI2M works as a master and the PR200 PLC as a slave. SMI2M as a master actively requests data from Modbus slaves. For example, in smart agriculture, it might pull soil moisture sensors and weather stations, optimizing irrigation and crop management. In an industrial context, such as a manufacturing facility, it could also communicate with machinery controllers, conveyor systems and inventory sensors to gather operational data. This active engagement allows SMI2M to provide users with valuable insights and control over their systems. We can change the value on the slave PR200 PLC and observe how it appears on the master SMI2M display. First, open the Akitech LP software. Click on device settings, go to the interface and change modus to slave if not already selected. The other parameters can remain the same as they are in the default mode. Now, go to the master settings and change the address to 10, as we configured in the SMI2M. Since we want to display real values, we declare a variable named slave real of type real with register address 512. Next, we declare another local variable named input of type real, which can be controlled by the display and joined to the network variable slave real. In the display manager, click on form one to add a new form. Then click on display element and drag the IO box in real to the display. Add the variable input to the IO box. Now, Load the program to the PR200. As you can see, when the value is changed on the PR200 display, the value also changes on the SMI2M display. Now let's configure the SMI2M as the spy. We'll follow the same process as before. All the common parameters for the RS485 interface, display and safe output state can remain the same. To configure the SMI2M as the spy, we need to make some changes in the spy mode section. First, let's change the target device address from 1 to 15 and the start register to 4. We change the target device address to 15 because, in this demonstration, we want to use our Akitech IO module product as a slave, which has the slave address 15. We want to read the temperature from a channel that has the register address 4. Our master in this demonstration will be our mini PLC PR200. Additionally, we set the byte order to swap registers in the Modbus common section. Now navigate to device settings and select operation mode. Set it to spy. The SMI2M is now configured as the Modbus spy. Click on the right parameters toolbar item to load all parameters into the SMI2M. Now, let's demonstrate the SMI2M in Modbus spy mode. SMI2M as a spy passively monitors communication between masters and slaves. For example, in an industrial environment, 
like a manufacturing facility, it could monitor interactions between PLCs, motor controllers, and sensors to identify potential issues or optimize processes. This passive role allows the SPY display to provide users with valuable insights into system performance, communication integrity, and potential optimization opportunities without directly interacting with the Modbus network. As already mentioned, we will use the analog input module as the slave and the PR200 PLC as the master. One temperature sensor is connected to channel one of the analog input module. Here we observe how the SMI2M displays the temperature when it is requested from the master to the slave. First, open the Akitech LP software, click on device settings, go to the interface and change it to master. The other parameters can remain the same as they are in the default mode. Next, add a slave by giving it a name and address 15. Since we want to read the temperature value from channel 1 of the analog input module, which is register address 4 and data type real, we declare a variable named temperature of type real and register address 4 with red function code 0x04 and write function code 0x10. Additionally, we need to change our register order by clicking register sequence change. Next, we add this temperature variable in our main program. Choose the network input component and add our declared temperature variable. If everything is configured and connected correctly, the SMI-2M should display the temperature, 